Hello, I'm back with the Mountain Blues today. I told you I'd have another one for you soon. And this one is going to be some mountain mountains made of blue. So we are starting off with a bumpy rock with nooks and crannies in it. And that's okay because we're going to make it look beautiful. And I'm just putting a quick coat of white acrylic paint on top because I want my colors to be really bright. So I am just kind of starting off with a base coat of white. I'm letting it dry uh, so that once I mix my blue in, you don't actually just turn it into a big mess of white and blue mixed together. I made sure the paint is dry. So I'm starting off with cerulean blue and I'm using sponges. You can use any kind of sponges for this. Um, you just need to blend. So make sure I've had a couple people message me asking why um, they're not getting the color that I'm getting, why it's kind of looking muddy. Um, try not using too much, first of all, when you're sponging. Always sponge some off. Don't don't have too much on your sponge. And make sure you switch sponges with every color or go clean your sponges out. Um, or else you're just mixing another color with another color and it's never going to work out uh, the way you want it to. It gets really frustrating. So definitely use a new sponge for each different color that you're using. Uh, because I'm using just blues today, I started off with the dark blue and I'm working my, my way up to the light. I'm just using the same sponge, to be honest. Um, but uh, that's totally up to you. It is probably a better idea to rinse your sponges out, dry them off on a on a little tea towel or whatever. I, I use a towel. I have a towel on my lap all the time when I'm painting. Um, it just helps get all the moisture out of the sponges so that I can continue to use them. Um, now, I am literally just going from dark to light. So at the bottom of this light lighter color blue, which is the ocean view, I will list the paint colors in the description. Um, I've just kind of added a little bit of white at the very bottom there and I'm going to stop right there because now we are going to put in uh, some mountains and uh, so this is kind of a fun thing. I've seen a lot of artists kind of do this technique so I wanted to, to do it with you guys. It's very simple and it looks really really cool when it's done. So um, I'm starting with a thicker paintbrush um, from what I normally use. Uh, as you can see here, and I'm just doing my own little silly design of mountains. It kind of looks like a mountain range at the back there. Now you definitely can do different shaped mountains than this. You can make them a lot more realistic looking. Um, I'm just kind of looking at this from a distance. Like when you see the finished picture, you're kind of standing back up on a different mountain and you're looking over and this is what you're gonna see. So it's kind of foggy, and you don't really see all the definition on the mountains, but they are there, and you'll see them. The, uh, the closer they get to us, the darker they get, um, the darker blue they get. And then we're gonna add some trees on top of that. So what I'm doing is I started with white, and now I'm adding a little bit of blue to my white so that my next set of mountains, because I've got my white set, now my next set is going to be a little bit bluer. And as we go along, and they don't have to be the exact same shape. You don't have to do these light blue mountains the same shape as the white ones. They can, they can all be different. Just make sure you can still see the white ones when you're done. But I am doing just random mountains with smooth peaks. They're not all pointy. I'm just keeping them smooth because they're at such a distance. Not much definition on these mountains here. Now I'm just using my sponge to kind of even out the brush strokes and make it look a little more clean. Uh, and now I'm adding a little bit more blue. This is the Cayman blue um, to that same light blue that I was just using. Adding that in and darkening up the next set of mountains that are a little bit closer. And see, I'm doing these mountains different again. I use the thicker paintbrush to um, get my shape on there. And then I use my sponge to go in and dab that down so that I don't see any brush strokes. And it evens out the color nicely. And you don't need like a lot of thick coats over top of it. 
So I just sponge it out. It makes it look a little more soft. And I'm just literally going to add more blue. So I'm going to start adding the darker blue, the cerulean blue, to this color that I just used. And I'm just using the same blues I've been using for the sky. It's all going to match. Um, you don't have to use blue. If you want to do this in all purples, you can do that. If you want to do this in a sunset theme, uh, that's completely up to you. Um, you can just use all of the same color. So greens, blues, purples, reds, you can use all the same color and still get the same effect. But I'm just doing my mountain blues. Now I have painted it on with the thicker paintbrush and now I'm sponging it out again to get rid of all of those brush strokes that I don't like. And smoothing out the mountains. So they're starting to come together a little bit. You can kind of envision with me um, that they look like mountain tops from a distance. Now I'm going in with that dark cerulean blue and this one I'm making sure that I have a nice dark thick coat of that because I don't want to see the other blue behind it. I want to make sure that each set of mountains is their own and that I don't see anything through my paint. Very cool. And I'm only doing a couple of mountains. I'm changing them everywhere. So they're not all at the same height. They're not all the same. They don't have to be. You can do it the same, but I like to change up my mountains so that none of them are exactly the same. Now I am going to add some black to my dark blue. I don't want to quite have black yet, but I'm going to add dark blue and black together, mixed together, and it makes it a very, very, very deep, deep, deep blue, which is hard to see on this video, but it's much easier to see in person, and it'll be even more easier once it's been resined, which I will show you at the end. Now I will be adding some hologram 2796 to the sky uh, once I'm letting my mountains dry a little bit. Um, I have all the mountains the way I want them. It's hard to kind of see the dark blue mountain and then the blackish colored mountains because they're so similar, but I promise you can see it very well in person. And as for the hologram 2796, I just want the sky to glitter. I want the mountains to stay the way they are. I'm not going to do anything else with the mountains. I'm not going to outline them with gold or black or anything. We're just going to leave them just like this. But like I said, I want my sky to sparkle because there's not too many rocks of mine that don't have some kind of glitter or gold or or something, something sparkling on it. So, uh, but this time I'm only going to do the sky. I'm just going to be, be sure to make, make my next tutorial very, very glittery <laughs> so that I don't uh, go through any kind of glitter withdrawals. So I'm just outlining the white there to make sure that it is separated from the sky those mountains are completely separate. The sky is shimmering with hologram 2796 and you can't tell because there's no resin on my rock yet, but uh, at the end you'll see that glitter like crazy. Like I said, paint colors that I have used will all be listed in the description. Um, some people have a difficult time finding hologram. So if you find hologram where you are, please leave it in the comments. That way everybody can find it and make this beautiful rock together. So I'm going in with that same paintbrush that I was using to, to start off the mountains with. Um, and I'm just kind of swooping it down from left to right, bringing it down to make it look like a tree. Um, I am going to add some wisps off the end of the branches with my fine lining brush um, shortly. But this one, this tree is closest to us. Um, so it's going to be a bigger tree and I will add that definition to it shortly. 
So just make sure that you can't see all the way through the tree down the middle. You don't want to see too much. Um, do whatever kind of tree silhouette you want. Um, I'm just kind of doing the type that you would see in a lot of paintings with mountains or in, in a lot of pictures with mountains, um, pine trees and, and fir trees and stuff like that. So that's what I'm doing today. You can do a different one. It's completely up to you. You can do a spooky tree and then have like a little witch on a broom silhouette in the sky um, to make this more of a Halloween rock. So um, this one isn't Halloween-y. Like I said uh, in my last tutorial, I didn't have a Halloween one yet um, for this week, but I might later, you never know. Um, but you could make this one kind of spooky if you uh, put some creativity to it. So for my further back trees, you want them to be smaller, um, thinner, and you want the branches to look smaller as well. So I'm using my fine lining brush to do the trees that are further back instead of using that thicker one. But like I said, I'm going to make the tree that's closest to us uh, a little wispier using this same paintbrush that I'm using right now. Just make sure, like you can pencil on a couple of lines so that you know where you want your trees to be and you're making sure that they're not all swaying in different directions or leaning to the side too much. Um, you can definitely start off with pencil, but I'm a daredevil, so I'm just going right on here with my black paint and you're welcome to do the same thing. <laughs> um, whatever, whatever makes you happy, that's all that matters. You can put in as many trees as you want. Uh, you can do more trees that are further away on the other mountains if you'd like. Uh, it's completely up to you from here. I just got you started. So I hope you guys like this one. I think it's really kind of soothing to look at it and, and picture yourself just standing there listening for any kind of beautiful forest sounds. Maybe there's like a, a waterfall close by. You could just imagine it the way the way you want it. Now um, I'm doing it again with uh, the paintbrush. I'm going to use a thicker one to get my my tree in because this is not not the biggest tree, but it's bigger. So you want to make sure that you're not flinging paint all over your painting as well. Take care with your brush. Make sure it's not just spraying everywhere and ruining your background. Um, but at the same time, you want to make sure there's enough paint on your brush that it's going to make that little flick in the in the tree branch. So just don't have too much. And then go in afterwards with a fine lining brush to do the, like the little wisps on the trees afterwards. So that looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. I'm going to leave my signature for the back on this one. Um, and I'm going to resin it for you so you can see it. Now it's going to change quickly here into a different background. Um, I just like to show you what it looks like before I resin for a minute. And then, bada boom. I just want to thank all of my subscribers. You guys are so loyal and loving and I love each and every one of you. I hope you love this tutorial. I hope you can do something creative with it. Bring in your own creativity and, and your artistic spark and make something beautiful. Thank you for painting with me. I love you guys.